Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm joined here by the Formula manager Dino Brown to preview their upcoming 24 25 season. Thanks for joining me like you did last year, Dino. How are you doing, mate? Not a problem, mate. My pleasure. Um, very good, thank you. Um, obviously, I had our first friendly feature yesterday, so just having a little bit of a a little bit of a think about that really the, the last 24 hours and just looking forward to getting going again we've got another friendly on Tuesday night um, so yeah just just looking forward to the season to get going really and obviously I really enjoy doing these previews so it's it's nice to speak to you again Matt Yeah I think, I think, about, I think when you were last year you said that you wanted to get promoted it didn't quite work out that way did it in, in the end No it, it didn't Um we had quite a tough start. Obviously, it was a bit of a fire at the ground. And then I think we had to have nine away games on the spin. And I think mm. when it got to the nitty-gritty, I think we were maybe second bottom after those nine games or third or fourth. We were somewhere near the bottom. And I think that really defined our... Um, I think we went 10 or 11 games unbeaten yeah, um, through so October, November, December. And that got us to, to somewhere near to where we needed to be. But... Then again, obviously, we just didn't finish the season very well and we just sort of dropped away. But I think we just had a little bit too much catching up to do, if I'm honest. But asked me the same question, I'd still say I'd want I'd want promotion this year. So I think every manager is in it because they want to try and get promoted, um, want to try and win the league. And I wouldn't be doing it if I, if I didn't think as though that was achievable. Uh, how did you find the goal yesterday? Uh, we played Gisborough. Um, in the Memorial Cup that we play every year. Um, Gisborough beat us 2-0 yesterday. Um, they'll do really well next year. Uh, billy has got them really well drilled. They're, they're a good side. Um, and they've added some youth to that side as well, which is which is really good for them. Um, it was a competitive game, I thought. Not, the keepers didn't really have much to do. It was competed really well in between both boxes and Truth be told, I think Gisbridge were a little bit better in, in the end and deserved the victory. And uh, I feel like when it came to last season, we would you say the stand-up players were for you? Um, when we went on our good run, Ryan Wright, who we signed from from West Auckland, he, he scored a fair few goals and he's extremely talented and he's got a big big future ahead of him in, in the sport. Dale Milburn also scored goals. Unfortunately we've lost him to Crook. Um but some of the some of the older heads, some of the more experienced lads like James Raw, um Jack Proctor, our goalkeeper Ronan, when it really mattered in the big moments of the games, those type of lads there stood up. But I, I don't really like picking picking players out because it, it's a team game and at some point at some point over the season, every player had a, had a vital part to play. Um, and I'm sure that's going to be the same this season going forward. Uh, have you made any uh, new signings for this so far this summer? Say that again, mate. Sorry, you just broke you, up a little bit. Has the club made any new signings for this summer? Yeah, we've brought a couple of new faces in. Um, obviously, we've lost a couple, so I'm always looking to strengthen. Um, so... We have signed a, 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 quite a couple of players, to be fair. Pete Bulmer's come in, who was at Stockton and, and Bishop Auckland last year. So that's a great sign for us. He's got great quality and great experience at this level. So we'll really strengthen our side. We've signed Luke Pasatini from Shildon, um, who's a really good young player and, and they'll be breaking into our first team this year. So there are a couple of exciting signings and there's a few more in the pipeline. Um and there's a few young lads as well who we've we've had on trial and we're gonna give them give them a bit of a chance to see if they they can cut it at this level. So it's exciting times for, for the for the football club. Um I don't know if you want to talk about it, but it's being well documented about what happened with the ladies and stuff like that. So that's just sort of set me back a couple of weeks. So it's been quite difficult with guys' recruitment, but I feel as though we're getting somewhere near now and Really starting up the squad starting to take shape and looking forward to the next few friendly games to see what the lads can do, really. Yeah, and you mentioned another thing with the ladies. I wasn't actually gonna mention it because obviously it's not me that you're really a part of. Obviously, you've got nothing to do with that, have you really? No, but 
listen, let's not let's not beat around the bush and talk there. So we might, we might as well talk about it. I don't mind. Um, yeah, so it, it was it was what it was really. The the, the ladies were gonna were gonna leave the football club, um, and some things went on that in the social media as if, as everyone's got the right to say what they want over Twitter and Facebook. And there were some things that were a little bit out of order from my point of view regarding some of the people who, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be a football club. You you like to travel in and. And Marty Hodgson and the rest of the committee have left. If it wasn't for them, particularly last year, when things were really difficult, there wouldn't be a Thorna BFC. So I just want to put that out there on your platform. That a massive thank you from myself um, to the to those committee members who had to leave. But in in sport, in football, things have to move on, and and that's what it's done. And the the chairman Gary and Girard, the, the new company that have come in with uh, John and Ali. It's really, really exciting time for Thornaby. Uh, um, as you said, I didn't really have much to do with it. I was sort of sitting on the fence because I didn't really know the ins and outs of it all, but I'm quite happy at this moment in time. Thornaby's in, in good hands and there's good people at the football club still, which is which is really, really positive. And the, the club's in a really good place. Obviously, the women and the girls team have, have come back and the girls teams have come back on board, sorry, and it's it's a really positive place to be. Um sort of a one club mentality where it's just Thornaby FC, it's not Thornaby FC men's or Thornaby FC girls and it's an exciting time, it's an exciting place to be around and, and hopefully if results go right on the pitch we can get a really good vibe and a good feel around the place. Was it like down to funds? Do you think it was like we went up to fund for the women's side? Do you think a little bit? I think so. And and the lack of sort of volunteers, there was a lot of work done from Trevor Wing and, and the other lads, and I think they would have found it hard to to give up the amount of time and put the amount of effort that they put into the to the men's to put that into the women's. Um, but you could ask ten different people and. 10 different people will give you 10 different stories. Um, but as, as far as I'm concerned, that's all in the past now and I'm just looking forward. Um, and if I didn't think the football club was in a was in a good position and in a good place, I wouldn't be sat here now because I, I don't need it. I, I want to, to progress my career and make sure Thornaby's got a football club to be proud of going forward with or without Dean or Brown. So... That's why I'm here and I want to sort of create a little bit of a legacy for the town because there's some fantastic volunteers, fantastic uh, supporters that follow the club um, home and away, not just the men's, but the ladies as well. And I know with what's going on at the club at this moment in time, it's something that the town should be really, really excited about and get get fully behind, really. Um. Obviously, like last year when we did this last year, we talked a lot about the fire ride. I mean, how's the ground been now? Uh, doing this since then. Yeah, great. So, the area where the fire was last year, um, there's a brand new build there now. With like a, it's like a brand new bar, and I think that's going to be sort of a sponsors lounge there. Um, for for anybody who wants to sponsor, they they can come and have some food and some drinks in sort of the sponsors lounge. Um, there's plans to to make the ground a lot better. Um, there's been some real progress over the last couple of weeks on the pitch and the surrounding areas. So, as I say, John and Ali, you've come in, and, and Rachel and Phil and Gary and Tony, I could name everybody, to be fair, and I'm sorry if I've missed anybody out. They've been doing some great work behind the scenes to try and get the club to, to where it needs to be. And the potential for the club and the ground is, is massive, so... It's an exciting time for Thornaby and obviously, fingers crossed, we can get it right on the pitch because that can only help. And obviously, it's the of our community and the uh, volunteers. That's what non-league football is about, really, all about, really, isn't it? Yeah, no, no club can survive without volunteers and, and the committee and things like that. And as I've said previously, particularly Thornaby FC, I've, I've had a couple of clubs who have had, have had really good volunteers and, and really good committee. But as I mentioned, Trevor and the lads before who were previously on the committee who aren't anymore, if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be a Thornaby. It was from sweeping the dressing room to signing players on to 
helping um, bring funds in to sign players or pay players. That's that's what they all done. So I'll be forever thankful, and I'm sure everybody at the football club will be forever thankful for those people. And obviously across both divisions and all across the country in non-league football, if it wasn't for volunteers and people who give up their own time to to make sure these clubs can exist, there wouldn't be any, you know. So a massive tip my hat to all, all those volunteers and committee members. The final question is, you've already said about wanting to promote this year. How has uh, the training been going for the pre-season? Yeah, we came back early because I felt as though we were late last year. So we came back at, at probably a, a week or two early to try and get as many sessions as we can into the lads. Um, I'm sure if you, every manager that comes on here will say pre-season's pre-season. Lads are away. Um, you just try and get as many bodies to the training sessions as you can. But it's been a real good standard. Um, we've had good numbers, which has been, which has been really, really helpful. Um and yeah, the, the lads have worked really hard to get themselves fit and to understand what we want from a from a management team. Myself and Carl are, are quite further in how we want a player and we need to make sure that the lads understand that and it's been a, a good start. Obviously, it was a tough game yesterday, which is what we wanted. Um, the first one, the first one's always nice to, to be tough and to get good minutes into lads' legs. So that was good and I thought for Miles it was quite quite. Um, but again, we've got five five more games to come and I think probably seven more training sessions before the season starts, which there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and yeah, just looking forward to it and hopefully we can start well like we didn't last year. If we can start well, you never know what's going to happen. But one thing I do know, I've been keeping an eye on, on, on the other clubs in, in our division and a lot of clubs are strengthening um, and doing really well. So it's going to be a tough league, and I think anyone can sort of win it. So it'll be it'll be good, it'll be exciting, and I'm sure by the end of the season comes there'll be a few twists and turns as there always is. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the channel once again. It's been absolutely brilliant to have you on. I'm sure we'll end up doing this again next year, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'll be on for me hat trick. <laughs> Hopefully next year we won't have something big about the media to talk about. It seems every both these two years I've had you on last year with the fire this year it's a women's team. It's just... I'm, unlucky. I'm unlucky, mate. Three, three, three times lucky, yeah. Third time's a charm. We'll see what it is. <laughs> see what it is. Yeah. All three to promotion to talk about. <laughs> Nothing next year, we won't have any problems because the people that are watching this, I've constantly had problems to me with Zoom. It's it's it seems just to seem to like us, does it? I'm not coming on next year then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Nice to speak to you. Take care, sir, and I'll catch up with you during the season. Okay. Yeah, of course. The uh, pre-season uh, Red Cup play. We're taking we're taking on Fon and I think club is like 16 or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, so I'll probably catch up with you then. Take care, mate. See you, mate. Bye, bye.